Many are still blessed to have their dads with them. Uh, we're not always, uh, not always um, that uh, fortunate to, to still have our dads. I'm going to be sharing some scriptures. There's a, an assortment of them throughout the message. I'm not going to share them initially, but maybe we can just uh, bow our heads in prayer for a second and, and to thank God for his word and, and that uh, his word permeates our hearts and souls. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, uh, that we are able to gather this morning near and far here in the uh, congregation physically and, and those who, who listen in online. And we just ask, Lord, a blessing upon your message today and that uh, your spirit moves, continues to move through your word, that it touches our hearts, that you speak to us. We praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Most of you know, if you've been listening to me for any amount of years, uh, Father's Day and Mother's Day, there are difficult messages to come up with, something new or fresh. And uh, as I mentioned, I've got a few scriptures that I'm going to share and probably no more than normal on any other Sunday, but I want to focus on what a great father is this morning. And to begin, I'll read some scriptures from why on a negative spot, maybe, or a negative outlook, is why some fathers are lacking in their fatherly duties. And the scripture comes from 1 John chapter 2. I'm reading verses 15 to 17. John says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the cravings of sinful man, the lust of his eyes, the boasting of what he has and does, comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives forever. Our earthly fathers of the world have choices to make. On one hand, they can serve themselves, or on the other, they can help, they can instruct, they can encourage their children and others that they have influence over or are close to. And John says not to love the world or anything in it because if in the world and its desires, if they're the man's main focus, it's only going to be that the man's family will suffer. If a man only serves himself because of the love of this world, then the love of the Father, John says, is not in him. It's that simple. And this goes for moms too. If God, our Heavenly Father, has little or no place in the life of our earthly parents, then the children and others of our earthly parents, they, the, the, they could influence. There's going to be suffering. The basis of a father not being a good father is a lack of relationship with the father of us all. Which brings us to our next reading from Genesis, very early. Genesis 1.1, 1, 1. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Our Heavenly Father created all things, including you and I. We're just new stuff compared to all of this time. And then in verses 26 to 28 of that first chapter of Genesis, God says, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, and all, over all of the creatures that move along the ground. My dad pointed this out to me one time. He asked the question, who was God talking to when he says, let us make man in our image? God is speaking to his co-creator, Jesus Christ. Verse 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image he created them, making them male and female. In that first half of verse 28, God blessed them. And said, be fruitful and increase in number. And that, of course, is how we all became to be here. Unless you're Dolly, the clone sheep. God had created us. And then humankind, all of us, have messed up by sinning against God. And after this, we are all doomed to die and be separated from our creator. Separated from our father. Which brings us to another reading. Because God had made plans to make a way to reconcile us to himself. Because he loves us. He wants us to be in relationship. He wants to continue to be our heavenly father, not our heavenly destroyer. 
So here's some familiar verses from John's gospel. Just as Moses, I'm sorry, chapter 3, verses 14 to 16. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. This is Jesus. That everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. And of course, most of us are familiar with John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus, our creator, our heavenly father in the flesh, gave his perfect and sinless life that we may be forgiven. When we place our faith, our trust in Jesus, when we trust what our heavenly father has said, we can find this salvation through Jesus and we're forgiven. We're promised life, not death, life from the father. Matthew 6.14 says, If you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Good earthly dads will teach their children to forgive others so that God will forgive them. God loves us, we're told, and we need to believe him. In 1 John 3, verses 1 to 3, How great is the love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that's what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not been made known yet. But we know when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope in themselves purifies themselves, just as Jesus is pure. We are God's children. We may not feel that sometimes, but we are. He loved us so much, he calls us children. He's adopted us. Our Heavenly Father, as we've seen so far, he's created us. And when humankind sinned, our Heavenly Father has made a way for us to be together with him through love and through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Our Father continues to give us life, and he continues to sustain us daily. John 10, verses 10 to 11, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. This thief, Satan himself. But Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd, of course, we know he laid down his life for his sheep. That's us. And again, John shows us that Jesus came to give us eternal life through his work. And now this eternal life that our Heavenly Father wants us to have, well, it requires that we be part of a cycle, a cycle of love. John describes that cycle in John chapter 15. He says, as the Father has loved me, Jesus is saying, he says, so I have loved you. Remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. And the reason that Jesus tells us these things, he says in verse 11, I've told you this, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Couldn't we all agree that we could use that kind of joy? And Jesus ends this section by, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. As the Father has loved me, Jesus said, so I've loved you. And Jesus wants us, each and every one of us, to continue on with this love for one another. And we can only do this if we remain in that relationship we have with our Heavenly Father. We do this by returning our love to the Heavenly Father. Whatever he has given us, giving it back. Giving it back to others. Loving our Heavenly Father. It's the Father's love that sustains us, keeps the Christian faith going so that his love never stops flowing in or through us. Jesus says, obey my commands. And his command is for us to love one another. We've been created. We've been reconciled to God. We've been saved. We're sustained daily and given strength for today. And the presence of our Heavenly Father's love for us is very real. He promises to be with us forever. 
His love doesn't fail. In John 14, starting at verse 15, if you love me, you'll obey what I command. And this is that a sign or a trait of the Christian who's in fellowship with God our Father. They'll find themselves, you and I will find themselves in fellowship with other Christians. Verse 16, I will ask the Father and he'll give you another counselor to be with you. For how long? Forever. The spirit of truth, Jesus calls him. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he lives in you. He will be with you. Our Heavenly Father has given us his Holy Spirit, the Counselor, as Jesus calls him. The Holy Spirit is with us as we live out our Christian lives, helping us to love the unlovable, loving us and guiding us, just like any loving and godly dad would do. It is unfortunate some children do not have or never had great earthly dads. The counselor of God, our Father, is much wiser, much more loving, and experienced in the way to life than even our own earthly dads. Jesus says in John 14, verse 18, he says, I, I'm going to leave you, but I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'll come to you. I can remember back in June of 03. It's when my dad passed away. One of my sisters said at the time, she says, I guess we're orphans now because we no longer have parents. We're not orphans. Our Heavenly Father is looking after us. And one way he does this is by our love for one another, be it family, blood family, or our Christian family. Through love that has come from our Heavenly Father, we are still children of God. We're reconciled, we're guided, we're protected, and we're promised life in the future. Jesus says in this section, Before long the world will not see me, but you will. Because I live, you also will live. And on that day you'll realize that I'm in the Father, and the Father is in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, that's the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them. We may one day die a mortal person's death here on earth. One day, though, there's going to be an end to all of that. Jesus says, because I live, you will also live. The Christian may stop breathing. But the Christian is never going to die. And that's hard to wrap our heads around. Like maybe some of the instructions and the guidance and teaching that we did get from our earthly dads at one point in time that we didn't understand as they were trying to teach us how to live. But our Creator and our Savior says we will live. And we can trust our Heavenly Father. And John says on the basis of this relationship is when we obey his commands, this is how we show our Heavenly Father that we love him. Because we do what Jesus has told us to do. It sounds like a lot of talk about love, and yet it's Father's Day, but you might, you might think that it should be more about our dads and our thoughts of them. I'm leaving that to what's going on in your own mind. Because we do celebrate our dads. But in reality, love, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Men, our earthly fathers, will have done the best job raising us when they have raised us in the love and the fellowship of our Heavenly Father. And I'll be honest. In my younger years, I always thought that Avery Crest, my dad, well, we didn't get along. We were just like we were from two different planets. But as I grew older, I began to realize different things about my dad. And when I think of what's really important, I had a dad that directed me in the paths and the ways of God. He certainly showed his love for me in that way. My family can testify that my dad wasn't much to show emotion. It was rare. 
But he was my dad, and was he perfect? Hardly. Some of you knew him, some of you worked with him, and I don't want to hear any of those stories right now. You know he wasn't perfect, but in God's eyes, in his heavenly father's eyes, my earthly dad did what his heavenly father commanded. He loved his creator, and through him, he showed his love to his family and Christian brothers and sisters near and far. So happy Father's Day to all of our dads, to all of our fathers, first our creator and our earthly fathers past and present. May God bless them all. And as we close in prayer, let me just share one little brief scripture from Matthew 5, 48. Jesus says, be perfect, therefore as your heavenly Father is perfect. Well, each of us as humans know, when we take a serious look at ourselves, we know we're not perfect. And even though Jesus has told us in the scripture to be perfect, our Heavenly Father is perfect. Jesus was and is perfect. But we need to remember when we look back into our lives and we look into the lives of our earthly dads and mothers, we don't find protection, uh, perfection. Who among us has had a perfect dad? Perfect. None. But our perfect Heavenly Father He's perfect. It's only when our earthly dads sought or seek the will of their heavenly father that they will have done the best for their children. So let's give thanks to our heavenly father in our prayer time for all that he's done. Also his influence on our past and present earthly dads. Let's pray for those dads in our lives who have not yet to begin a relationship with Jesus Christ that they too may become a child of our Heavenly Father and in turn be better dads to their children. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, creator of all things and creator of each and every one of us, whether all of humanity recognizes and gives you that, we pray, Lord. We praise you and thank you for all that you've done. And we thank you, Lord, for those of us who have been blessed with godly dads, godly moms, who have enlightened us and showed us the way of your love. We pray, Lord, for earthly dads and moms, too, who haven't yet begun a relationship with you. We pray, Lord, that your spirit would be able to break through. We pray that they too may become a child of you and in turn be better equipped to direct and teach their children, their grandchildren, those whom they have influence. May they learn from your example of love that you've shown us. Lord, we know that our earthly dads are not perfect, as neither are we, but Lord, we pray that all of our earthly dads will come to seek you for your forgiveness in turn, that they guide their children in ways that are good and perfect, pleasing in your sight. Heavenly Father, we ask for your continued protection against all things that would harm us, physically, spiritually, Lord. Protect us through your spirit. Draw us in deeper with you, Lord. Help us to be grateful for all those you use to supply our daily needs. We ask, Lord, your a special blessing to be with those who are mourning loss of loved ones in our community, in our church. And we pray, Lord, for your healing touch for those in the hospital and in long-term care. We know, Lord, you knit us together, cell by cell. You can heal. You can protect. You can guide. You can lift up. Use us, Lord where you see fit to answer these prayers. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Happy Father's Day and blessings to each and every one of you on your week, near and far. And don't forget to wash your hands. Thank <laughs> you.